How are you doing? Good. How about you? Good morning, let's stand and sing the uh, first, second, and last verse.
first now. everybody awake now? Yes. now that'll get you going if you if you woke up uh, dead this morning that just got you going and it just got you going it's good to be here this morning as you're being seated uh truly is a blessing to be in God's house how many of you got washed away yesterday and uh well we're all here so that's good God blessed us with some good rain you know here's the thing if you got a lot of rain yesterday, if you fussed about the rain yesterday, remember the day you said, well, I wished it would rain. It is so dry. Just remember that. Just remember that. Always, always in how we look at things. And if we see it as a blessing, then that's exactly what it was, a blessing uh, with it. And uh, now I was wondering if it was a blessing when I was driving back in it yesterday at times, but it truly was a blessing. God got me through it. And uh, you know the great thing about a rain what do you see in the sunlight after the rain? Rainbow. A rainbow. And so just a good a God just reminding us of his blessings. And that's what we're here today to celebrate, God's blessings. We're here this morning just to rejoice in uh, just the greatness of God. We have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. How many of you woke up this morning? Yeah. Oh, there's a reason to be thankful. There's a reason to be thankful. How many of you had to walk to church this morning? There's another reason to be thankful, right? And, uh, and uh, even though I, I live close enough, I could have walked. I still got in a truck this morning and drove over. So it's just one of those things, folks. There's so much to be thankful for, and we need to just rejoice in it. We need to give God glory and give God the praise, and let's do just that. Let's do just that. You know, here's the thing. I've always heard that it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. It takes more energy to frown than it does to smile. Why do you think that is? Because God had rather us smile than frown. So think about that. So let's rejoice in that today and let's honor him. Folks, if you're here with us this morning for the first time, we're glad that you're here. If you're here this morning for the 50th time, we're glad you're here. And if you're here this morning for the 100th time or whatever, we're glad you're here. Basically, what's the, what's the gist of that? We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today, whether you're here in-house or through virtual this morning. We're so glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us, though, you're not just a visitor. You're among family. So welcome to the family today. Hope we make you feel like family. Hope that you enjoy your time together with our family today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today, and let's just uh, thank Him for the blessings. Let's thank Him for the, the praise and give Him praise, and let's just focus on Him. God, thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you for your blessings. God, as we talked about just getting started this morning, there are so many things to be thankful for. God, I'm thankful for the fact that I'm saved and one day I'm going to fly away. And God, we rejoice in that. God, I'm thankful that we're able to be in your house this morning to worship you and to praise you and to celebrate you. God, I'm thankful that you blessed us with rain yesterday. But God, also the promises that come through that with the rainbow that comes following it. Lord, there's just so many great things that we need to just open our eyes and look at and see you all around us. And God, we just thank you for all of that. God, we thank you for each person that's participating in our service this morning, whether it's in person or virtually. God, we ask you just to touch them and bless them as only you can uh, as well. God, there's others that are battling this COVID. Uh, God, there's, there's others that are just battling uh, other things in their lives. But God, we know that you're the great and almighty God. 
We know, God, there is nothing that's too big for you to handle. So, God, we put it all in your hands. God, we pray that today every person that needs that special touch from you will receive it. God, we pray today that uh, whether they're dealing with a sickness, uh, physical sickness, spiritual sickness, or mental sickness, God, I pray that today you would touch them and heal them as only you can. God, I pray for that person in our service today that may be lost and not know you as their Lord and Savior. God, I pray today would be that day of salvation. God, I pray that as we look today at the importance of prayer and persistently praying, God, that there may be somebody here today that hasn't really prayed in years. And God, I pray that today they would return to you and having that persistent and continuous prayer life. And God, be with this choir and Brother Greg as they lead us in worship. God, may we honor and glorify you in all that we do. And God, when we leave this place today, it's my prayer that we'll be closer to you than we were when we got here. And God, that we will be more like you when we leave than we were when we got here. God, thank you again for the blessings of the day. First, in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship this morning. Brother Greg. Amen. Very special hymn song that says, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. this morning. There's a song that says in Christ alone. It's such an awesome written song. We don't sing that a whole lot, but uh, someone asked me the other day about singing this song, and I love the message that it talks about. Let's see if we can sing and worship together.
some line of lyrics there till he returns or calls me home folks that gives me comfort you don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow it says till he returns or, call, or calls me home all we have to do is stand in the power of christ and he is going to deliver us amen? amen i feel good in the lord didn't come to preach this morning i won't preach but i tell you what i love the message in that song it's uh I tell you what, I believe we can have a little church here. I look over and see all the choir. Most everybody's here. I think we've got one that's traveling today. Other than that, everybody's here. It's always good to see uh, most of the choir show up. It's good to see y'all show up. Amen. If it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't have anybody to sing to. Amen. And if it wasn't for us, y'all wouldn't have anybody to listen to. It works both ways, right? <laughs> hey, I, let's see if we can do a song. I love this. Uh, this is an old hymn song. Someone uh, uh, said, hey, I like this hymn song. Maybe we can kind of jazz it up a little bit. But I, I love the message. It says, I'm pressing on to a, toward higher ground. Do you remember that song? It was number two in the blue book that I was raised <laughs> on. Higher ground. All right, let's see if we can sing this. Well, let's sing the first, second, and last verse. We may play a little bit, all right? I'm pressing on
don't you stand? Everybody sing that last verse. I believe you clap your hands. Then. I want to escape. seated for just a moment. I was reading this week. Uh, I love uh, finding stories about songs and uh, how they were written. And uh, I I'd heard this song for uh, many, many, many years. And I had never heard the story behind the song. Back in 1922, there was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ray Miller that wrote a poem. And um, this particular uh, poem was kind of laid by the, the side there for a few years. There's a, a lady that found this poem. She picked up and she thought how deeply written the words were. And her son was just kind of kind of dabbling with the piano at the time. And she left the words to this poem laying on the piano in hopes that her son would find it. Sure enough, uh, he found it and um, he kind of read it and began to peck around a little bit on the piano and wound up putting the, the music to this song. Well, after that particular day, um, the mother asked the son to sing the song in church. And he sang that song many, many years ago. And that service and that song changed the, the trajectory of this young man's life. You know that young man today is George Beverly Shea. And he worked many, many years with the Billy, G Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And this song, that little poem that was left on a piano by a mother's prayer changed that young man's life. And his music and his legacy went on to change the hearts of so many people around the world. And I hope the message in the song and this little poem will just touch your heart this morning.
People are running all over the world looking for happiness. But folks, this can only be found in Jesus. So I'd rather have Jesus than everything this world has to offer. And that's something we need to always remember in everything that we do. Well, this morning we're going to continue looking at devoted to prayer. As we started last week talking about, you know, and we're in the devoted series from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. We've talked about being devoted to Christ. We've talked about being devoted to uh, the Word of God, devoted to each other. And now we're talking about being devoted to prayer. And, and so last week we kind of talked about what a devoted prayer life looks like. Today I want to start looking at what praying persistently looks like. What praying persistently looks like. Now, how many of you have ever been to Walmart and seen a kid begging his mama or his daddy or his grandmama for a toy? I was blessed several years ago or cursed, depending on how you want to look at it. I worked at Walmart during Christmas, and I was assigned the toy department. Like I said, I don't know if it was a blessing or a curse. And you ought to see the kids that would come in there and grab a hold of toys. And I'm telling you what, they would throw a royal fit in the middle of that, you know. And, and here's what the parents would say, and you can't sit there and say, well, I would never have said that because you probably have said it too. It's Christmas time. Santa Claus might bring that to you, right? Put it on your Christmas list, right? I don't want to wait till Christmas. I want it now. You know what I saw more times than not? It went home with them right then. Why? Because they were persistent. They were persistent in it. And if sometimes it might have been, you'll get that toy, but you'll also get it when you get home too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you kind of said that too with it. But th that kid was very persistent. I've often wondered, what if we were as persistent about praying to God for God's will in our life? What if we were as persistent in praying for God's will in our church as we are being persistent to get what we want and when we want it? I read a story about D.L. Moody. I love D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody was one of the great preachers of, of the, the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, the Moody Institute in Chicago was named after him and just a great, great man of God. After the Chicago fire in 1871, D.L. Moody's church was destroyed. It was destroyed. And so D.L. Moody took time to go to England. He wanted to go to England and learn from the English pastors, learn how the English uh, churches were doing it. Wonderful guys like Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And so they wanted to go and learn from guys like that. So he wasn't looking for preaching opportunities, but he got an opportunity to preach at this church while he was over there. And so he, he stood up to preach. And here's what the story says. It says, That Sunday morning, however, was a very discouraging experience for him. The entire service felt ice cold, and it was obvious to him that the congregation was spiritually dead. Now listen to that. Here's the great preacher, D.L. Moody, preaching, and in the midst of his preaching, he felt that the congregation was spiritually dead. They were stone-faced, visibly bored with the message, and in turn, Moody was utterly disheartened. Unfortunately, however, he has already commit, was already committed to return to speak at the evening service too. Now, can you imagine? And I've preached to those folks. It's going, I've got to come back and preach again to this group? Well, that's kind of what he's doing. He says, yet to his great amazement, the spiritual atmosphere of the evening service was completely different. The Spirit was stirring the hearts of the congregation as Moody spoke, and this time they were listening intently to every word. Moody knew he had done anything different to the account for the change, but he was at a loss to understand what had happened. When he finished preaching what had been an anointed sermon, he asked all who would like to become Christians to rise so they could pray for them. 
Hundreds of people stood all throughout the sanctuary. Moody looked at them in astonishment and asked them to be seated again, thinking they had misunderstood what he was asking of them. He then explained about the cost of becoming a disciple. After that explanation, he once stood again, he, he asked again, those who wanted to follow Christ to stand. Again, several hundred people stood. Still dumbfounded, Moody asked those who were serious about their decision to meet with the pastor the next evening. But the host minister was no more equipped to deal with the response than Moody. What will I do with these people, he asked. I don't know what to do with them. Meanwhile, Moody followed through on his plans to travel to Dublin that Monday. But Tuesday morning, he received a telegram urging his return to London as soon as possible. Come at once, it read, church packed. They had even more inquiries on Monday than on Sunday evening. Moody immediately returned and subsequently held meetings over the next 10 days, during which time 400 people were taken into membership of that church. This was just the beginning of a dramatic series of revival services Moody held throughout England during that trip. Only later was the source of his sudden and unexpected revival discovered. There were two sisters living together who belonged to that congregation. One was healthy and active, but the other suffered from a debilitating disease and had been confined to her bed for several years. One day, as she was bemoaning her condition, she realized that she could still pray. So she began praying night and day for God to revive her dead congregation. For a long time, nothing changed. The church remained lifeless, just as Moody had found it. During this time, however, she also read a copy of an evangelistic sermon Moody had preached in America. And on that basis, she began praying earnestly for God to send him to her church, even as unlikely as that seemed. It so happened that when her sister returned from the morning service that Sunday when Moody first preached, she asked, Who do you think spoke this morning? When her sister was unable to guess after several tries, she was told, Minister Moody from America. Upon hearing that news, she turned pale and said, I know what that means. I've been praying he would come, and God has heard my prayer. I would have fasted if I had known. Please leave me alone to pray. I don't want any visitors or any supper. I must pray. Her nearly two years of prayers were the reason Moody had come and the source of the power behind his preaching in her church that night. Moody himself had known there was a hidden spiritual power at work that evening. But when he learned about this, he sought her out and her sickbed to meet her personally. Now listen to that again. Think about that. A fire that destroyed most all of Chicago in 1871 led Moody across the sea. Led Moody across the ocean to preach in England. Just so happened preached in a church that a lady had been praying for two years that he would come preach at her church and that her church would get on fire for Jesus. Now, here's something I thought about. It took a fire to light a fire. Now, think about that, folks. But here's what I go back to say it took the fire. It took the fire of her passion to see her church have revival. And she realized that even in her bedridden state, that she could do one major thing still, pray. Now, folks, if we want to see revival in America, we've got to take the same approach this lady took to see revival in her church in England. Pray. Pray. And that's what I want us to look at today. I want us to, to build a persistent prayer life. And I want us to be persistently praying just like this lady did. And so if we want to see God-sized things happen, then we've got to be praying to a God-sized God. And so let's look at today what several things in the Scripture says. The Bible is full of passages that tell us to ask. I mean, the Bible is full of places that says ask, 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 ask. If the Bible tells us in so many places to ask, why do we find it so hard to do it? I've often thought about several different thoughts of that process. 
The Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 2, you desire and you do not have. Now look at that. You desire and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and you war. You do not have. Why? Because you do not ask. Have you ever thought about that God wants to give you so many things, but we never ask for it? God has so many blessings in store for us, but we never ask for it. Now, if you, if you look at, at Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, it tells us that your Father knows the things you need before you ask Him. Well, now, why should I ask if He already knows what I need? Why should I ask if He already knows what I need? I got asked that question by a deacon in a church several years ago. Why should we pray if God already knows what we need? Does God know what you want? Sure, God knows what you want. How, does, how do we know God knows what you want? Because He's God. He knows everything. He, know, he created you. He knows everything there is about you. But we need to understand, as the Bible tells us today in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, and that's where our focal verses are today. It says this, Keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep searching, and you will find. Keep knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who searches finds, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. Now, I want us to stop right here today, and I want us to look at these three imperatives. Keep asking, keep searching, keep knocking. The Bible Knowledge Commentary says this, God welcomes prayer, and He urged them to continue to come to Him continuously and persistently. This is emphasized by the present tense in the verbs, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Notice there that it is not uh, ask one time and move on. Look one time and move on. Knock one time and move on. He is telling us to keep asking. To keep asking. How many times do we pray for things one time and move on? How many times do we pray for things two times and just move on? Lord, save my lost loved one. Lord, save my lost loved one. Well, they're a lost cause. We might as well move on. Lord, save this other person now. Lord, save this other person. Well, God didn't save them either. It must be a lost cause there. Let's move on. God, bring rain. Now, whoever prayed that yesterday, God answered that one. Okay? But how many times during a drought do we give up praying for rain? Because we're like, what's the use? But the Bible here tells us to keep asking, to keep praying. Now, here's the thing. You will not change God's mind by keep praying. I have been trying for years to get a brand-new Ranger bass boat. Even Denny tried to help me out with that the other day. But not only did God say no, Marcia said no. But I also realize that the day that it's God's will for me to have that, guess what? I'll have it. And that's the key, is we keep asking in God's will. And so I want us today to look at several places in Scripture where it tells us to ask. And it just confirms this idea of keep asking. Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. It says, Therefore I tell you, all the things you pray and ask for, believe that you have received them and you will have them. Now, what is the key there to praying and receiving? Faith. Believing. Believing. How many times do we pray for things and we even pray and go, even this is too big for God? There are people who believe that. 
there are people who respond in that way. And that there's no, I have had people tell me there's no need praying for that. That's just, God, God, that's just too much for God. Now, folks, the Bible tells us there's nothing impossible for God. There's nothing too big for God. And God wants us to pray to Him even in the minute details. I mean, it can be the smallest of details or it can be the largest of problems. And God wants us to come to Him and ask Him and believe in it. Matthew chapter 21 verse 22 says, Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Do you believe God answers your prayers? Amen. Yes. Some of you in just the short time I've known you has said things to me like, keep praying, God is answering. Keep praying, God is blessing. God is answering those prayers. Keep praying. And that's isn't that exact, is that not exactly what the Scripture tells us to do here? Keep praying. Keep asking. And so if you look here in, in John 15, verse 7, it says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now, let's look here what it continues to say in the Scripture, though. In John 14, verses 13 and 14, Whatever you ask how in my name, this I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, folks, there's why we say in Jesus' name at the end of all of our prayers. Because the Bible tells us to pray in the name of Jesus. And so that's why we say in the name of Jesus, amen. And, and so, but looking at this, it says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. But look, skip down, uh, uh, Jason, on those, a couple of verses. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his what? Will, he hears us. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we will have the request that we have asked of him. Jesus taught us to pray in the will of God. He's praying in the garden the night before he was arrested and put on the cross. And he says, Father, if it be your will, take this cup away from me. But then he goes on to say again, not my will, but thy will be done. So Jesus showed us the example of praying the will of God, and praying, uh, the, asking for the will of God. But see, folks, we need to remember that we need to just keep asking, keep asking, keep asking. But I want us to look at something else it says here. He says, keep searching. Keep searching. How many times have you asked God for something only to find out that he didn't grant your request and you probably did what? Gave up. How many times, though, has God answered our prayer and we not even notice it? I heard David Jeremiah say one time that we should pray so specifically and we should be praying so specifically that when God answers it, we can't help but notice it. That we need to be praying so specifically that when God answers it, we can't help but notice it. I put a challenge before our church a few years ago to be praying for a 300% increase. To be praying for a 300% increase. Now, a church running 100 people and a 300% increase would have put us running what? Any math teachers? 300. Okay? Now, here's the other thing. I was praying that God would boost our offerings by 300%. Boost our baptisms by 300%. 
Well, we didn't reach the 300% in membership and attendance, but we surpassed 300% in baptisms. And as I step back, you know, everybody's like, well, we didn't reach the 300%. We didn't reach the 300%. And when I gave the report at the end of the year, we had had about 305% in baptisms. Now, folks, that's that praying specifically. And I think that's where this searching keeps coming in. God's answering our prayers. God is answering our prayers, but we don't see it a lot of times. We don't see it. How many times do you sit back at the end of the day and go, God didn't answer my prayer this morning? How many times do you do that? We all do that. We're all guilty of that. Hell, I prayed for God to do something today, and he didn't. But what if God did something else that was even bigger? And there's where we got to keep looking for that. So what are we searching for? The will of God. We are searching for the will of God. But here's the other thing. A persistent prayer life of asking is important. But not only are we to be asking, we are to be searching. Searching for what? Searching for God's answer. Searching for God's answer. I think God answers more prayers than we realize. I really think God answers more prayers than we realize. Because here's the thing. God answers every prayer. God answers every prayer. He says yes. He says no. He says, not yet. God answers every prayer. Garth Brooks had a song several years ago. It says, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. How many of you can relate to that song? And I sat back when he, when he released that song back in the 90s. I sat back and I went, Whew. I dodged a bullet on that one. I dodged a bullet on that one. I dodged a bullet on that one. It was all the things that I thought I wanted that I was praying for, but God had other plans. So we need to be seeking and searching for God's answer, but we also need to be learning that sometimes God's answer is no. And we have to accept that. And so we're asking and asking and asking But it might be that God is going, no, 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 no. Have you ever known of anybody to pray to win the lottery? You ever known of somebody to pray to win the lottery? Lord, if I could just win the lottery, all my problems would be solved. How many people do you know that end up or have you seen in the news and the reports that win the lottery and end up more in poverty than they were before they won the lottery? Have you ever thought about that? See, here's the thing. First of all, a lot of those people that pray, God, if I could just win the lottery, well, first of all, and I'm not endorsing playing the lottery, but they ain't ever going to win it unless they played it. You know, so that was just kind of an empty prayer. That's a wasted prayer there. That might be wishful thinking. Now, don't go out and buy lottery tickets today and say the preacher said it's okay because it's not, okay? But that's kind of that idea. God says no. I, I, th- I thought about other things. There's people that's been married five, six, seven, eight, nine times. And it might have been that they were always praying, God, send me the right husband. But they missed the phrase, right husband. And they thought, okay, just because God sent me a husband, that's the way it's, that's my husband. Folks, we need to be praying the will of God, but we need to be searching for the will of God. And we need to be asking in the will of God. But we need to be accepting God's answers to our prayers. Search for God's will in our lives. We've already looked at that. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence that we have toward him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 
And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that the requests that have been made have been asked of him. We can ask for the moon. But if it is not God's will for us to have the moon, he will answer no. Why should we waste our words praying for selfish things when it isn't God's will for us to have those selfish things? What does the Bible tell us a mark of a disciple is? Denying self. Denying self. Doing what? Seek ye first the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. So, folks, we need to, if we're going to have a consistent and a persistent prayer life, we've got to be asking, but we've also got to be seeking God in prayer. We've got to be seeking Him. And I love what it says there, keep searching. So many people go, well, I found Jesus years ago. Some of you live like you lost Him. And I'm not talking just about us here. I'm talking about Christians in general. They live like they lost him because they're still living for self rather than living for Jesus, seeking his will. So what can we ask for? We can ask God to reveal his will to us. Father, if it be your will, blank. What if we prayed that in all of our prayers? Father, if it be your will, give me this. But see, so many times when I hear people pray, it's always, God, give me this, God, give me this, God, give me this, God, give me this, God, give me that, give me this, give me that, give me that, give me this, give me this. And I never hear the phrase, if it be your will. So, folks, today as we're building a consistent and a persistent prayer life, we need to be asking, but we also need to be seeking the will of God in our prayers. Because here's the thing, if you ask it in my will, he will do what, the Scripture tell us? He'll grant it. He'll give it to you. Do you want to know what the will of God is for your life? When was the last time you asked him? When was the last time you asked him to show you his will for your life? Because the Bible tells us that if we ask in faith and if we believe it, he's going to do what? He'll answer it. He'll show it. See, the, we need to be asking for God to give us wisdom to know his will. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. I love what that says. If any of you lacks wisdom, what should we do? Pray. How many times have you ever heard the phrase, or how many times maybe have you even said the phrase, I just don't know what to do in this situation? Don't we all use that phrase sometimes? I just don't know what to do in this situation. The Bible tells us, point blank, if you lack wisdom, ask God. Now, what's that telling us to do? Where's that telling us to put our attention in everything? God. So seeking, searching, knocking. I, lo I love what he goes on to there. says, who gives to all generously and without criticizing. Has God ever looked at you and go, what are you asking for that for? God has never looked at me and now, but now, boy, quit asking for that because you're not getting it. But we also understand that he gives us the guidance and the wisdom that we need. My God shall supply all my what? Needs. If I need wisdom, where will I get it? God. And so we need to ask him. There we are again back to that first word, ask. There we are back to that first word, ask. Ask. When was the last time you really asked God for something? When was the last time you really poured out your heart to God, seeking His will, seeking Him to answer a prayer? Now, I know some of you, in the short time I've known you, has been prayer warriors. 
And God has answered those prayers. And God continues to answer those prayers. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep searching, keep knocking. Keep knocking. This is one of those things that helps us to remember to never give up. Never give up. There's been times I've been out on outreach and visitation and I go up somebody's house. I, I might even come to some of y'all's house and do the same thing. If I hear you in the house talking, or if I hear, Psh, there's the preacher, run. I got pretty good hearing most of the time. Don't tell my wife that. She's watching. So, But here, here's the thing. Never give up. There's an example of it. You've all gone to somebody's house, and you know they're there. You know they're there, and you're just going to keep knocking. Folks, that's the way we need to be also in our prayer, keeping it up. Don't get discouraged in your prayer life. It might be that God's answering the prayer, not yet. P-U-S-H, push. P-U-S-H, push. Pray until something happens. Push. Pray until something happens. Several years ago, I was serving a church, and we were doing that. We, we had had the push prayer emphasis and we were praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and in that revival we saw 30 people saved in a church running a little over 100 people now folks I'm telling you if you don't believe in the power of prayer you experience something like that and you'll believe it you'll experience God's answer of prayer and you'll believe it what about the lady that was praying for D.L. Moody to come preach at her church? Two years she was praying for D.L. Moody, specifically for D.L. Moody to come and preach at her church. And guess what happened? She prayed so much that what happened? God showed up. There was revival that took place. Never give up praying and seeking the will of God. Why can we have this kind of expectation that God's going to answer our prayers? Well, first of all, because he told us he would. God told us he would answer our prayers. Now, folks, God's not a liar. So if we pray and we don't expect God to answer the prayer, then we're making God out to be a liar. When God says, ask anything in my name, and if you pray in my will, I will give it to you. I will hear it and give it to you. Well, God, give me a million dollars. But it may not be his will. But here's the thing. Have you ever been praying for God to meet a need in your life financially? And all of a sudden you get one of them random checks in the mail that you didn't expect? There's been times in my life that that's happened. It's like, where did this come from? You know, have you ever got one of those rebates from your insurance company when you least expected it? So, folks, don't sit back and go, well, the insurance company gave me something. First of all, the insurance company ain't going to give you nothing. Because they may give you a rebate of $100 and raise your rates $150. But that's God meeting a need when you had that need in your life. And when we see things that way, mm, what a blessing. But God has your best interest at heart. 
And that's what we see here. If we keep asking, if we keep searching, if we keep knocking, the door will be open. Everyone who asks receives, who knocks, searches finds, who knocks, the door's open. But then he says in verse 9, What man among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to you who ask him? See, God's not going to give you what you don't need. God's not going to give you something that's going to harm you. But we got to be seeking him. we got to be asking him to give us what we need. we got to be asking him to give us what's his will for us. Can I show you something interesting about this passage? What letter does ask start with? A. What letter does searching start with? S. What letter does knocking start with? What does that spell? Ask. Look at that, folks. The Bible here has told us in all of this long thing, keep doing this, keep doing this, keep doing this, keep doing this, and basically all he is telling us to do is what? Ask. Now, folks, that's what a persistent prayer life is. It's just asking God. It's talking to God. It's spending time with God. Are you praying persistently in your life? Maybe there's something in your life, though, that God has told you again and again and again, no. It's time to move on. Because you're missing out on something else he wants to give you. Are you praying persistently for his will? So I'll ask a question as we close. When was the last time you really prayed? When was the last time you really prayed? Well, it was this morning at breakfast. Did you really pray at breakfast? Maybe it was, God, thank you for this bacon in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, listen, I'm thankful for bacon. I told you all that last Sunday. That's what I had for breakfast again this morning. But as we look at this, when have you really prayed, God, reveal your will to me. God, make your will known to me. When was the last time you were searching for God's will in your life? When was the last time that you gave up on a prayer when you shouldn't have? This passage today tells us to never give up praying, never give up seeking, and never give up asking. Three answers to every prayer, as I've already said, yes, no, and not yet. Yes, no, and not yet. Which one has God answered your prayers with today? Do you even know? Maybe you need to keep asking. Maybe you need to keep searching. Maybe you need to keep knocking until God reveals it to you. Would you ask him today? Would you ask him today? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Persistent prayer, a devoted prayer life, consists of asking. Asking. Are you praying? You can't be devoted to prayer if you don't pray. So today, will you make that commitment to have that persistent prayer life that you will keep asking, you will keep searching, you will keep knocking, you will keep searching for God's will, will you keep looking to Jesus? Is Jesus first in your life? If he's not, you're not going to have a persistent prayer life. If Jesus is not the most important thing in your life, you're not going to be talking to him. So folks, the first step you've got to take to having that persistent prayer life is having Jesus as the central focus of your life. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus to save you. It's real easy. 
The Bible says that we're all sinners. So the first step is admitting that you're a sinner. You've got to admit that when the Bible says we're all sinners, that that includes you. But you've got to believe that Jesus is who God says he is and that he can save you. Confess your sins. But folks, then you've got to make that decision to repent and follow. You've got to make that decision to repent and follow. And all of that starts when you ask Jesus to save you. When you ask him to forgive you of your sins. When you ask him to help you turn from the world and turn to him. When you ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. But what about those that have been saved for years and they haven't been living in a persistent prayer state? Well, today you need to repent as well. See, when we talked about this in Sunday school this morning, repentance is not a one-time thing. Repentance is daily. (laughs) Repentance is almost minute by minute. And so as we look at this and as we think about this, we need to be asking ourselves, what are we asking God to do in our lives? Are we asking Him to be that Lord? Maybe today, if you haven't been living that persistent prayer life, you need to just come and say, God, I'm sorry, I have not been following you the way I'm supposed to. But from this day forward, I commit my life to to you, and I want to ask, seek, and knock daily. Today, will you do that? Will you commit to pray? Will you commit to be devoted to prayer? And will you just simply start asking? Will you do that today? God, thank you so much for all your blessings. Thank you for answered prayers, even those that you say no to. God, it's my prayer that anybody here that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, that right now you're tugging at that heart to be saved today. But God, it's also my prayer that if there's somebody here who has not been living with a full belief that prayer works, that today, God, you have shown them the importance of staying committed to prayer. God, will you help us all to be persistent in our prayer life? God, there may be one person that sparks a revival because of persistent prayer like the bedridden lady in England did in 1871. God, if you could do it then, I know you can do it now. But God, if you could do something amazing with one praying, God, I can't help but wonder what would happen if all of us was praying like that. So God, help us all to respond tonight or today praying persistently and continuously for your will and seeking your will. First, in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Saul, stand for our time of response. And let's respond. Maybe this morning you need to come to this altar and begin praying persistently for that lost loved one. Maybe you need to come and start praying persistently for a revival to happen. Whatever you need to start praying this morning, do it today.
Let's just bow our heads in prayer. God's working in the hearts of people at this altar already this morning. God may be working in your heart today. If you need to be seated where you are and just spend time in prayer, do that. Whatever God is calling you to do today, respond. All hearts and minds clear. God said, everyone said, amen. Amen. It's been good to be here this morning. It's been good to just feel God's presence. This morning we sang, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Folks, let's go out today and let's live that way. Let's live that Jesus is all we need. And let's let the world know that. Let's let the world know that today. But let's let our lives show it in our actions. Do you believe God can answer your prayers? Let's be praying it. Keep asking. Keep searching. Keep knocking. Never give up praying. Because I can tell you, God never gives up on you. Let's always remember that couple of things to remember. This afternoon, our deacons will meet at 4.30. I'll be in prayer for that. Choir also meets at 4.30. Uh, listen, there may not be any, any empty seats up here right now, but we can put more up here. Okay? I know Brother Greg's praying for more people in the choir. Maybe today God's been telling you that you need to do it. Be the answer to his prayer. Because I can tell you, he's going to keep asking. So let's keep. So today's a good time. They've just started working on Christmas stuff. So today's a good day to show up for that. So remember that. Also, yesterday we had to cancel our four-wheeler ride. Uh, we will be doing that in two weeks on the 24th. On the 24th, we'll be doing the four-wheeler ride, 9 o'clock, just like before. So remember that. The 31st will be our fall festival. We'll have more details on that next week. Uh, so looking forward to that on a Saturday afternoon uh, as well. Uh, several of you have find, signed up already to feed that family on the 24th. Um, Davidson family, was that it? Uh, the Davidson family, uh, so they'll be having a graveside service out here at our cemetery on the 24th that afternoon. So several of you have signed up for that. There's a sign-up sheet on the table, I mean on the four-year wall uh, bulletin board. So take that. Sign up if you have any questions. Miss Jackie's handling that. Uh, so she can help you with that as well. Any other prayer requests today? Our GAs and RAs are back up and going. Our RAs are going camping next weekend. So be in prayer for, for them and be in prayer for their adult leaders that will be going with them uh, too. All right. Let's close in prayer today and just thank the Lord for a great day here. And uh, Brother Raymond, would you lead us?